Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. Hello YouTube, FT here. So let's do the house keeping. I'm smoking my Peterson system pipe, which was handed down to me via my mother from my grandfather. And in it I am smoking a black stag from Mark and Amber. Well, I was pleased to see that my package got to Mark and Amber. The second package I sent got to Mark and Amber. And the package I sent to Jay got to Jay, DigiFX. But the first package to Amber and the package I sent to John Daffalilly One have just vanished. So I'll draw a line underneath that episode. I've just got to get Daff Lily One sorted out. I've been making some clocks out of tobacco tins, the same as hobby pipes. I've also moved on to cigar boxes. I'll show you a few of those. One of the problems we have with tobacco tins in the UK is that they have those awful smoking kills labels stuck on them. Just recently they've started to incorporate the label as part of the main label. So if you were to take that off, you'd have three quarters of a label or half a label uh, with the tobacco name and the other half would say smoking kills. So if you take that off, um, you'd be left with bare tin. So I haven't had a Skype with Patrick and Terry. Terry came up with the idea of making replacement labels for the anti-smoking ones. I've done a few and I just want to show you how they look. So here in the UK, if you buy a tin like this, this whole bottom section here would either have a label stuck over it, in which case it's not a problem because I can actually remove the label without damaging the label underneath. But recently they've been coming with this bottom half printed along with the top half as one label. So to remove the bottom part you have to cut the label across, take this away and you're left with bare tin underneath. So in order to avoid that happening, uh, this is what I've come up with. So you've still got the area but I've uh, replaced what was there with statements such as enjoy your tobacco. Only the best tobacco money can buy. Stay calm and smoke a pipe. Another example I've tried to go for is to totally reprint the label with something totally different and and what you wouldn't normally see. Well, time for a pipe. And last but not least, Dunhill Tobacco Sucks. <laughs> so these can now be made into clocks with the fake warning labels which aren't warning at all they're saying nice things about tobacco smoking and I've started to go over now to cigar boxes I was finding that some of the cigar boxes I was buying from eBay were actually very nice pieces of uh, art almost So I'd just like to show you a few that I've finished off. This is made from an Olivia Series G Churchill box. And if you listen carefully, I 
love the ticking of the clock. So my mechanisms are actually ticking mechanisms. I have some that are just sweep mechanisms like the Rolex watch. It just sweeps the second hand round. But these ones actually step them round. I've got little rubber feet so it stands off the catch. I'm going to put the dial in the top part rather than in, in the middle. This one I'm actually giving to my brother. And I've made one using this box, which is an Ashton box. very very nice box. I put the dial in the middle of this one, use bigger hands and a red second hand against the black. I've also added some rubber feet here, these are squared rubber feet so it stands above the catch and again, in order to change the battery, you basically just open it up. While I were playing around with these, suddenly struck me that I could use a box as a travelling humidor for my cigars. This is a Kojima box and what I've done is I've put uh, brass corner caps on You put your cigars in there and you won't be able to see it but at the bottom here I've got a strip that you use in your humidors it's glued in place and you just top it up with humidor liquid or distilled water and when I'm traveling around it's protected by these corners it looks nice and it keeps your cigars uh, humidified. I'm working on a flat wall clock at the moment, which is, um, I think it's called AVO, AVO, AVO. At the moment, that's this one. I've just, uh, just done the hole at the moment for the hands. And I'll put a hole in the back with a hook. Because this is nice and thin, it will sit on the walls quite nicely. So I'm going to have this one in this study. And again, I'll get a ticking mechanism for this one. And while we're talking about the subject of clocks, this is the pipe stand that Patrick made for me. And I've added some corner units, brass corner units onto it, some rubber feet and where the bulb was here I've actually put in what was a pressure temperature gauge. As you can see now I've removed the inside of the pressure gauge using the pressure gauge dial I've bored the hole out and I've actually put a clock mechanism in. So it's now a clock and it's really confusing because you've got numbers on it so you know it's coming up to something like 10 to 3 but you look at it and you think it's something to 6 sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Keep them alight. I'll see you next time. Bye.